Hi, it's Tony again, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be getting into a, a reel that I've never worked on before. This is a Shimano FastCast X25 spinning reel. And uh, this is uh, it's a pretty clean-looking reel, it looks like. And uh, I'm not really seeing any real mechanical issues with it uh, so far. The bale looks good, and the spool is is moving along quite nicely um, and it's obviously spinning fine so we're going to be getting into this reel and uh, doing a basic take apart and service on this but uh, I've, I've used a lot of Shimano's over the years uh, mostly they're spinning reels and you know what they they make a great great spinning reel uh, just in general and uh, a quality product and so I, I have no complaints about Shimano spinning reels at all uh, but this reel is, I would say, kind of a medium-sized, uh, fresh, fresh to saltwater reel. It, uh, you know, it's it's capable of of handling a pretty ample amount of. I think it says anywhere between eight and fourteen pound test. It'll hold 160 yards of 14, so you know that, that, that that's a pretty good amount. So we're gonna start with taking our handle off here and uh, get that out of the equation. I'm suspecting mostly that it's it's mostly gonna be cleaning that we're gonna be doing on this reel. Uh, so we're gonna see what kind of drag system. So we got we have a top drag system in this, and we're gonna see what this consists of and. Interestingly enough, uh, this is a drag system that uh, cannot be removed, actually. But I can see that there's some grease build up here on top, and so I'm just going to take a Q-tip to that and just clean out some of that grease because we don't really want that in there at all. Uh, but this is a washer system in here, basically a hard washer system, and there could be a little spring under there, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't have a schematic on hand at the moment but it's definitely uh, not serviceable uh, so there there I guess there's an upside and a downside to that the the upside being is that you don't have to worry about servicing it downside is, is that you can't service it really so um, that's that's just one thing to note if you're if you're in the market for for this kind of reel um, or if you have one and you know you want to work on it, that's just one little thing to note. But just uh, looking at everything though here, I mean everything is is not too bad. It's just a little dirty, and you know we're just gonna clean off some of the old old oil and grease here, basically, and do what we can to get this ready for some fishing, hopefully soon. So that's uh, the spool assembly with the with the drag on top. No, no issues there really. I'm just going to clean off the, the top cap. So now we're going to get into the rest of it here. So just looking at this, so we've got our our wheel with with the teeth, and there's also uh, th this actually is part of the drag system, or it could be considered to be part of the drag system. There actually is a a hard fiber washer here uh, that that rests underneath here, and you can call it kind of a spacer, but I, I would consider that part of the drag uh, system just in general. And then we've got our our wheel, uh, toothed wheel here. So there's a couple of things here to to look at. So we've got a, a set screw here, which which I'm pretty sure needs to come out. Uh, there's no nut of any kind holding this rotor on. So we're going to see what happens here when I take this out. Being that I've never taken this particular reel apart before, this is going to be a first for me. Uh, but we're going to see what that actually does, if it does anything. I'm guessing that this this is some kind of a, a set key in here of some kind. And if we can get that set key out, then that might help us get the rotor off. So that's what that looks like there. It's just a little... It's like a little L bracket, basically. So that's 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 important to note, but we'll see if that allows us to get the rotor off, and it does not. So what that tells me is that uh, the rotor is actually attached uh, to the, uh, the, the pinion gear assembly. 
And we're going to verify that once we get all these screws out. So we've got three screws in these positions here. And we're going to get those out. And we're going to see what this is all about here. But this is a uh, what Shimano calls a fast cast model. It's got this lever here uh, that, and the thinking is, is that you you can trip this uh, this bale with that lever, and uh, you know with your with your thumb. And so it's great for for casting and retrieving uh, artificial lures. Essentially, is what that function is for. So it's definitely it's definitely designed. Uh, I would say with bass fishing in mind, and that would make sense because it actually has a, a little little emblem of a of a bass on there, so it makes sense. Okay, so now we're getting into the innards here, and we're just gonna kind of clean as we go here, and just get any of this excess grease out of here. As always, you know, we we want to eliminate all of the old contaminants, things that just don't belong inside these reels very important if you want a good clean operating piece of equipment now do note that there are two very very thin little little spacer washers here and you don't want to lose those and you don't want to bend them up either these are very very thin so you just want to keep those those intact it does look like they're both identical though however which would make sense <clears throat> So I'm just going to get a paper towel real quick and I'm just going to wipe wipe this down just a little bit. We'll get anything else out of there that doesn't belong in there. And we'll put our we'll put our little washers, copper washers back in place for now. So now we've got a uh, a cam right here as I would call it and that piece needs to come out. I can see some signs of rust damage down here, which I'm not happy about. So there's a pin down here at the bottom of the cam that you do need to take out in order to get this loosened here. And we're going to see what this is all about here. So yeah, there's definitely some rust-like damage going on in there. Let's just have a look at these pieces here real quick. So we're going to clean off this pin. No big deal there. And... Uh, we're definitely going to clean off this cam and get all this old grease off of this thing here. But this is a pretty typical design of these older vintage uh, assemblies the, in, in, the, in the spinning reels that they made. I'd say mostly throughout the 80s and uh, somewhat going into the 90s. This is a this is a pretty common design. So this is a brass cam here, and you know that rust damage is kind of kind of building up a little bit down there. But you know it's not too shabby actually. But it's it's nothing that uh, we can't hit a little steel wool with and uh, try to try to clean off a little bit of that the best that we can. We're not going to get it all off by any means, but we can just kind of clean it up a little bit and, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. So, okay. So that's that piece. Now we're going to get our main gear out here uh, and we're going to see uh, what's actually involved in that. If there's anything special that we need to do. So it would appear to me that there's there's some kind of a, a rubber grommet here and there's also a little another little thin washer that just came off on my finger here so we want to clean that up and we're going to put that aside for the time being but this main gear has to be able to come out somehow there we go okay i saw that there was like a there's like a little nylon washer here of some kind and it is loose so we're just going to take that out, um, but that was that was kind of holding up the uh, the process there a little bit. Uh, we're just going to do our cleaning here as we go. Lots and lots of old built up grease, so we definitely want to get all that out. But you know, looking inside here, I mean, this doesn't look too bad. Um, it's just dirty, uh, but there's nothing there's nothing bad to to really note per se. So this is. Um, this is our main gear here, 
I'm just going to get these pieces and parts kind of sorted out here so I can see everything. And uh, it looks fine. Uh, we're just going to clean that part up right now. Get all that old grease out of the equation. We don't need that in there. Don't want that impeding our operation when we're fishing with this. So I'm just going to get the paper towel and the rest of this here actually. Clean that up the best that we can. And while we're here, we'll uh, we'll just kind of take a little toothbrush here to these teeth, but you know they, they don't really look look too bad. Just clean that up a little bit. Um, it's all good there. And then we'll just try to clean the inside of this the best that we can. Um, okay. So there's that piece. So now we're at the part here where there's a, a key underneath here. And this is actually a pretty typical design too that uh, I've seen, especially on, on Daiwa reels and, and a number of other spinning reels. But there's a key down here that needs to come out and that will loosen uh, the... Um, the the pinion gear and pinion shaft at that point and it should enable us to take out our our rotor and uh, see i don't recall if this is actually a ball bearing design or not i'd like to think it is but the only way we're going to know is by taking this out it's either a, a bushing under there or a ball bearing more than likely so so that piece should be able to come out like so and it would appear it can only go in one way. So that's good to note. And now we should, in theory, be able to pull out our pinion shaft. We're definitely going to clean up this pinion shaft a little dirty. And now our rotor system uh, comes out. And we're just going to have a look here and see what's going on. So it's actually not, not too sophisticated. And... Uh, and actually, to my surprise, there there is no ball bearing, and uh, there's not really a, a bushing for that matter either. It's just a, a shaft assembly that's 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 mounted completely to the the pinion gear, and there is a spacer washer in here, and that just goes in there. So it's actually a very very simple uh, design. I was just surprised with how smooth it operated. Uh, for you know for something that doesn't have a, a bearing or a bushing in there of, of any sort so that's fine so we're just going to do some cleanup now uh, we're going to get all this old grease out of here there's a lot of gunked up grease here so we're going to work on that part but this is just standard working on these old vintage reels basically uh, getting all these parts and pieces cleaned up and uh if you do good maintenance on your on your reels, they'll they'll take care of you and last you for many years to come. So I'm not seeing any need to really blast anything down with any uh, penetrating oils or anything like that. And I try to avoid that, especially with reels that I would use in fresh water. I've mentioned that in a number of my videos. Every once in a while, I do have to resort to that, depending on on how bad a shape uh, the reel is actually in, uh, which in this case is not really much of an issue. So, so we're just going to clean this up. And uh, what I do like to do here is I like to hit a little oil uh, on, on, on this component here, and we'll use a little bit of Real X on that. It's good oil. And we're just going to do a little bead in here, just a little bit in these little moving parts right here. Don't need to get carried away with it, just so we can make sure that we we say that all that got got hit with the appropriate lubricant. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side for a moment. We're gonna clean our our pinion shaft, our main shaft. And I can see, you know, there's a little bit of gum on here of some kind. And so what I like to do with this is just bring that steel wool back out. And we're just going to clean this up the best that we can. 
and uh, try to smooth out anything that's on the surface here because we really want this to be smooth. We want this to be clean. We do not want any scarring or pitting or anything on there whatsoever. We want this to all work very, very solid. Parts, of course, for a vintage reel such as this, uh, probably pretty difficult to come by. I have run into a couple of good sources on eBay, uh, you know, independent shops that, that you know, specialize in Shimano parts, uh, but... You know, they don't necessarily have everything, so it's just one little thing to note about that. A lot of the times, you know, you wind up seeking out parts reels. I do know that this particular reel, there's not a lot of these out there on eBay. So that's just kind of something to uh, to note if you're, if you are in the market for one, or if you have one, and you want to work on it, that, you know, parts can be a little challenging to, to come by. So there's, there's a little bit of hardened grease kind of caught up down in this. So we're just going to do our best to, to clean this out, you know, with the help of some Q-tips. I definitely like to make use of Q-tips. They're, they're great for, for getting into the, these crevices, these hard to, hard to get to type areas. But yeah, it's actually a very, very simple design and, and that's nice. Uh, you know, in terms of, of working on it. So we've got this this uh, slim washer here that we need to get, get out. Very, very thin. And we're just going to clean off any of this old grease here real quick and get that off as best that we can. Like so. Okay. So we're pretty much at the point now where we're ready to start a reassembly. And so hopefully I can remember exactly uh, how everything needs to uh, go back together here. Um, just gonna make sure I got all my pieces and parts laid out in such a manner that uh, I understand where it's all gonna go. So we've done our little bead of oil here and so We'll, uh, we'll put our, our rotor back into place for starters, real simple, right? And we will uh, put our, our key back in, so that's locked in, like so. And we will also put our this little L bracket key back into place, and uh, so that we just don't have to worry about that at all. And uh, while we're here, we'll just do a tiny, tiny little bead of oil or lube, either or. I'll just do the real X here. And we're just going to do a tiny little bead of oil on these threads right here because I don't want to, I don't want those threads to ever get rusted up or anything to that effect. We'll just lock that back into place right now. So we don't need to worry about that piece at all. So that's all locked in real nice and good. And uh, while we're here, I'm just going to take a little little tube of lube that I have here, just some some pen lube, and we're gonna we're just going to put some of that on the pinion gear right now, just so that um, that's getting a little bit of lubricant in that department right there. And then, uh, you know, the rest of these parts don't really, don't really need a lot of attention per se. Um, it's just this lever right here primarily, and uh, that doesn't really require much, and so you don't need to sweat that too much. Okay, so now I believe we're ready to uh, reinstall our, our pinion shaft, and we're going to do the same deal here. We're going to put a little, a little line of lube on this shaft right here. You don't have to get carried away, but you know you want a little bit of it on there. And we're going to sink that back down into place like so. So 
that's all ready to go there. <clears throat> and then we uh, we have a series of, of all these other pieces here. And I need to make sure that I remember exactly how they all go. One thing that you can do is take pictures along the way. I've got the video, so I can always stop and go back if I need to. Um, but it's just important to, to note that you, um, that you, you know, you, you, you can, t you know, take, take pictures along the way. So, uh, so we've got our cam and our cam pin, of course, and then we've got our main gear and, uh, and then also this nylon, uh, washer as well. So we're going to. We're going to figure out how all that goes together. So our next part is the main gear that we're going to put in. And uh, we're going to lube that up on the teeth here real quick. You don't need to get carried away with this, but you just want to get enough of it on there to do, do the job right. So something like that should be fine. Just a couple little little dabs in there. And then... Uh, <clears throat> this piece I know came off of here, so we're just going to set that back in there, a little spacer washer, and we're just going to sink this back into place here and let that sink up with our pinion gear, like so. And then we've got this little nylon piece that, that needs to kind of go back on here, a little nylon washer so to speak like that and now we should in theory be able to put our cam uh, back into place and normally what i'll do in this situation is i will apply a little bit of lube around here for the cam to pick up on because these are all moving parts here so i don't uh i don't get too too light on that I'll, I'll you know definitely put some on there like so again there's there's just kind of like that slightly right amount that you know you want to try to shoot for uh, you don't want to get too carried away with it by any means and then you should in theory be able to put your cam back into position like so and then this is this is probably a little tricky but you just have to line up your holes basically here so we're just gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bead of lube on this little pin here just to help get it started here and we're gonna line that up with the hole on the on the pinion shaft and sometimes you gotta tweak it a little bit but eventually you should be able to line it up and press it down like so uh, there's nothing else that locks it in it's it's just that that pin like so no big deal there so now we can put our other uh, pieces and parts back on so again we have these two thin washers here I'm gonna just put those on over the over the shaft right now and uh, so what, what it appears is that there's actually three spacer washers on here and I don't know if that's that's actually stock or not uh, but, you know, there's there's this brass one and then there's these two copper ones. So I'm going to assume that's how it's supposed to be. They're very, very thin. And it's just to, it's to help prevent any over friction of this cam, basically, on the surface. And so we'll put this, this back into position, like so. And then we've got our three screws. And... We're gonna get those back in there and I'm just gonna verify that they're all the same length. It looks like they are, so that's good. And I always like to do a little bead of oil on all my screw threads. So I'm just gonna take this little, little bottle of Real X here and we're gonna oil those up. But yeah, this is actually a, a very simple design to work on, uh, which is kind of, Kind of nice because um, sometimes you don't want to be spending you know hours and hours you know uh, doing basic maintenance on on a reel, um, and there's definitely been others that I've had to spend a long time on. I don't like rushing things, 
I usually find that, you know, rushing is, uh, is just begging for, for getting confused of, of how things go together and, uh, or how they come apart for that matter. So I try to avoid that at all costs. So we should be able to put our, our toothed wheel back into place along with our fiber washer like so. And then uh, there's really nothing under here that really needs anything. This is just a plastic uh, flapper here basically that hits uh, the teeth. I mean we can put maybe a little bit of lube on that just for good measure but that's that's about all you can really do there. So I'm just gonna slap that back on and get that into position like so. For some reason it doesn't feel quite right. Okay, I think that's right now. And then we're just gonna put our cap back on. We'll apply a little bit of tension to that. Yeah, that's right, okay. And then uh, we're just gonna finish it off with the handle and I'm just gonna clean off any anything that's in here that doesn't need to be in here. But yeah, as you can see, uh, there's not a lot of magic to to working on this uh, particular model, so that's uh, that's that's a nice thing. I'm just gonna put a little bead of lube in here and before I do that. I just want to clean off some of the excess dirt that's on this housing right here, and we'll put our our handle screw back into place once I take some of this rag fuzz off of here. <clears throat> and I find that a stubby flat blade usually works pretty good with these kinds of screws. And we're going to snug that up and we're going to try this out and make sure it's working fine. The only other thing that I can think of uh, that you would probably want to do when you're doing a maintenance on this kind of a reel is um, just check your bale system and make sure that your bale is, is operating properly. And you know, the one thing that you can do is you can, uh, you can add a little bit of uh, oil uh, to these areas right here, these little seams. Uh, basically, there's really nothing going on in here. Um, we'll put a little bit of oil just to kind of work its way into that hole, but um, it's it's basically just holding the bale in place. There's not much more to it than that. So I just like to, you know, let that oil kind of work its way in. You can actually get a little bit more access when you have it open here like so. But that's it. There's not a lot more to it than that. So... I'll try it out here, and uh, I'd say it's pretty good. Um, I'll tighten up our, our drag a little bit more and make sure that that, that drag is, is tightening, and it looks like it is. So make sure our anti-reverse is working okay. So there you have it. That's the Shimano X25 spinning reel, uh, all serviced up and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If, uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time.